What's up YouTube, Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper here. Uh, back again with another reptile room video, finally. It's been a while. I've gotten quite a few requests to film another one, so we're back. We're finally doing it. Uh, and we've got quite a few new animals, uh, some really nice new enclosures to show you guys, so let's get started. It's been about five months since the last reptile room video. So walking in, we're gonna notice quite a bit has changed. We're gonna start out right here in the middle on this little island with the first animal I started out with last time, skink, the northern blue tongue skink. So skink here, uh, I've had for quite a while now. I think we just passed the three year mark. Um, and I think he's also just passed three years old now. Um, He's going to go hide, but he was bred by a breeder in Florida named Bonita Gallas. Um, he's a normal northern blue tongue skink, and I finally actually converted him to a bioactive setup. Uh, and basically, as opposed to a normal setup, this is one that encourages natural behavior. Uh, he's on a substrate of uh, cypress mulch, potting soil, and sand, just a mix of all the three. Um, he's got some grass growing in here. This is, uh, Lugardi terrarium grass. I'm not sure what species it is, but propagates pretty well in there. Uh, he's got a ponytail palm up in the corner. Little beware of sign there. Um, he eats, let's see, he eats about once a week and he eats a mixture of wet dog food, uh, collard greens, squash, about 50% protein, 50% vegetable matter, and fruit. Uh, and he eats that, like I said, once a week. He gets a ground paste uh, with all those mixed together. And then he gets uh, roaches, blueberries, uh, fruit and stuff as treats. So continuing on with some more lizards, uh, I guess we'll move on to my rescue bearded dragons. I actually got these two right after the last reptile room video, uh, late December. And in here, this one is named Lizzie, and that one is Spike. Uh, they actually kept the names that their previous owners gave them, uh, and they were given to me because the previous owners felt they did not have the time or money to properly care for them anymore. Uh, both of these guys are also in naturalistic setups. That is, um, there's a bit more controversy surrounding that with bearded dragons, but it really does allow them to exercise their natural behaviors. Lizzie here has got a burrow back behind this piece of wood. Uh, she sleeps in there every night, so that's cool. Um, these aren't quite done. I'm planning to add some leaf litter on the bottom and a cleanup crew. Basically just uh, little organisms like wood lice, millipedes, stuff like that to clean up their uh, waste matter. Let me get this cage open. So Lizzie here is the healthier of the two. She's made a full recovery from uh, being with her previous owners. They didn't have any UV light or anything, uh, and they were only being fed once a week. But uh, Lizzie here is pretty healthy. She is eating a diet of uh, primarily dubia roaches, superworms, uh, and she gets every other day a salad, usually uh, collard greens, some sort of squash, um, rarely some fruit like strawberries, blueberries. Um, you can see she's shedding right now, so uh, still growing at, I believe she's four years old. Um, but yeah, she's doing good. She's got all this, all these wood pieces in here are driftwood I collected and cleaned from uh, Lake Travis, which is nearby. Um, this plant, I believe, is a species of Dracaena. It's not doing too great, but I only planted it in there recently. Should perk up soon. And she's got a little sprig of snake plant, or mother-in-law's tongue. I believe that's what that's called. Spike over here is doing a little less well uh, for multiple reasons. Primarily because uh, I think she has some internal parasite issues. Uh, I, I haven't done a check to know for sure, but um, I do believe she does have some parasites. Uh, but also because she keeps laying eggs. They're not fertile eggs, she's never been with a male, uh, but beardies, uh, some of them will regularly lay 
clutches of infertile eggs, um, and I haven't uh, had her spayed or anything to counteract that, but just have to keep feeding her calcium rich foods, uh, stuff like that, so she can keep up metabolically speaking. Uh, but she's also in a bioactive setup, more driftwood I collected locally, um, some bits of oak in there. Uh, she's got a little colony of dubia roaches actually set up in here that clean up her uh, waste matter. They usually stay back in those uh, oak pieces she's looking at. But she's on the same diet as Lizzie, although she gets a bit more calcium with her bugs. Moving on to what I consider the focal point of the room, this is the storage shelf. Uh, it's cost me about 70 bucks off someone on Craigslist a while back. Uh, each shelf can hold 2,000 pounds, so it's pretty good for this purpose. Uh, up here, this top shelf is entirely geckos, so we're going to get all the other lizards out of the way before we move on to the snakes, turtles, etc. Um, in here, these are some of my newer animals. These are Gold Dust Day Geckos, Felsum Melaticata. Um, they've got, they're in a, uh, 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra, and that's a planted vivarium. Uh, they've got some fern, bromeliad, uh, I believe that's another species of Dracaena back there, snake plant, uh, Tillandsia, little ficus. Uh, one of them is back here, let me try to encourage him out into the open. There he is. Uh, these are basically the Geico Gecko, uh, or the species it's based off of. Um, I've got three of these, two males and one female, I got at NARBC Arlington a while back. Um, and they've got a Reptifogger up there. It's easy to notice. Um, but he just moved back there. I've got a pair in here, hopefully they'll lay eggs sometime in the future. Haven't had any success yet. But in here is the second male. I thought I had been getting a trio, uh, one male, two females, but that was not the case. These two started fighting and uh, good times were not to be had. Here we go, finally got a better shot of the day geckos. This is the male uh, back on there. You can see they've got some really beautiful blue uh, rings around their eyes, nice red splotches on their back, and they've got that gold dust pattern, which is what gives them their name. Uh, the female, I believe, is somewhere back behind there. She just ran off as soon as I turned the camera on. Over here to the right of their cage, this is a newly set up vivarium. Uh, this is the crested gecko, Lemonhead. Um, she is, or he, I should say, uh, is doing well. Uh, back there, I believe, but he's in a 18 by 18 by 18 Exoterra. Um, he's got a big bromeliad, some pothos, a little spider plant, and uh, I always forget what these are called. I think it's an umbrella palm. I could be wrong about that. But let's see, here he is. Um, let's try to get him out. And this guy is a little demon. Um, it's ironic that one of my smallest lizards is the animal I'm afraid of the most, but it's true. This guy has tasted human blood and he will not rest until uh, he's bitten me as many times as he can. Uh, but he is doing great, hit a huge growth spurt since the last video, he's about half grown I'd say. Um, not quite. There we go. Um, I'll set you up there, I just fed him. Um, this guy and the day geckos eat Pangea uh, diet, that is basically a powdered mix that you uh, combine with water, and that's got uh, various fruits, um, insect parts, stuff like that. But they're all the arboreal geckos, they're doing very well. Um, over here to the right are both of my terrestrial geckos. Up here is the newest addition to my collection. I haven't actually made a video on him yet. Uh, I'll be doing that soon. But for now, this is the first look I've given at him on my channel. So, feel lucky. I'm gonna set him down here. This enclosure is just uh, an Exoterra breeder box. I think it's a medium. Uh, once again, I've got some pieces of driftwood in here, a little coconut. Um, 
and this little plastic hide. I forget what company makes them, but they're very reliable. I've also got one in there. We'll get to that later. But under here is my Packy Deck my Packy Dactylus Rangii or Nam Namib Web Footed Gecko. Still getting that name down. Haven't quite gotten there yet. But I got him uh, very recently from a uh, local breeder named Nathan uh, from Austin Reptile Connection. He's pretty skittish. He won't like me handling him. But let me get a closer shot here. Here we go. So like I said, this is a Pachydactylus rangii, Namib web-footed gecko, native to Namibia, I believe. Um, and they are a desert species, so that's why I have him on Repti Sand. Uh, wouldn't recommend using sand for anything other than a solely desert species. But he's doing good. He's supposedly a uh, seven-year-old breeder. I actually got him for free at the uh, Austin Herps Expo uh, this, I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, and he was kind of a gift, so that's very nice of Nathan. Um, but he's doing all right. He, I just gave him some crickets and dubia roaches for the first time last night, so we're waiting to see if he'll eat any of those. Um, but moving on. So this guy in here I've had for a while now. Uh, this is Watney, my Texas banded gecko. Uh, I got him from a friend named Lee who was moving out of town. Here he is, very cute little guy. Uh, this is, like I said, a Texas banded gecko, native to West Texas. Uh, similar species native to places like California, Arizona. Um, he's only a few inches long, one of my smallest animals. But he's doing well. Um, Also on Repti Sand, they're pretty desert-dwelling animals. A little coconut, some slate tiles to hide under. Uh, and he eats dubia roaches about once a week. Here he comes. But, very cute little gecko. But they both seem to be doing well. Uh, I keep them under, I think this is a Zoomed brand heat lamp, just to provide some heat day and night. Um, and it's a red bulb, so they won't be able to see the... Uh, light at night so it'll look just dark to them. I almost forgot I do have one more lizard. Um, he's not a permanent resident, uh, more of a rehab uh, like the ready slider from last reptile room video. But this is an adult female Texas spiny lizard. Um, she's getting pretty active. She was actually brought to me by a uh, neighbor uh, about a week ago and she, as you can, if she'll slow down for a second, as you can see, she has a very swollen hind leg back there. Uh, it looks infected. Um, that one on the left side. Um, and she's got multiple wounds on that leg. Uh, I believe she got attacked by a cat or a dog or something. But she lost a lot of blood when they found her, and so she was very unresponsive. And I'm actually really glad to see her uh, so frisky today, because she's just been lying around all week. But she'll be released as soon as that as soon as that leg is better. And I think she wants me to move on, so let's look at the snakes. We'll start off down here on the bottom shelf of the rack. Uh, in here it is probably my favorite snake at the moment. Here she is. This is Scylla, the Hog Island Boa Constrictor, uh, Boa Constrictor Imperator. She is a subspecies native to the um, Hog Islands, the Cayos Cochinos, off the coast of, I think, Guatemala. But she's nearing four feet. Uh, as you can see, I haven't fed her in a while. She's just looking a bit feisty. But once I get my hand in there and she realizes I'm not food, she should be a little more comfortable with this. Oh, look, she shed recently. That's cool. Um, you can see the shed in the back there. Hey, girl. So, once she realizes I'm not going to give her food right now, she should let me take her out with a little problem. Excellent. So this is Scylla, the Hog Island Boa Constrictor, as I said. Um, she's nearing four feet long, I think, doing very well. Uh, my best educational snake. Um, goes to lots of events with me. Has never bit anyone else. She's bit me once only because I uh, smelled like rats. 
but she's doing well. Eats one frozen thawed mouse once a week. I don't feed live rodents ever if I can help it. Uh, it's just unnecessary cruelty to the rodents, um, and they take frozen thawed just fine. So we'll get her back in there. Now you see, when you're working with snakes, you really gotta operate on their terms because when they decide they want to go somewhere, they really want to go somewhere. And she's decided she does not want to stay in that cage. She wants to come out and play. Uh, she wants to find food. Nope, nope, nope. Let's stay in there. Come on, come on. I gotta move on. I've got like 20 more animals to do, girl. All right, Scylla is finally put back up. We're gonna move on over here. This is my other constrictor. Kosho the Blood Python, uh, I believe that is Python Brongersmai is the scientific name. Um, she's doing alright, she's getting pretty big, three and a half feet I think. Um, that towel I just pulled off was to help retain humidity because I've been having some problems keeping her well. Um, th these snakes need high humidity to uh, shed properly and to stay healthy, so you can see I've got a humid or a uh, hydrometer in here measuring 73% that's just because I took the thing off um, just gotta hide in here you'll notice this is a different cage uh, last video I had her in a little plastic tub she grew she outgrew that pretty fast but she's back here uh, she's also hungry and these ones go by uh, heat primarily to find their food they have heat pits in their noses and they will uh, or along the sides of their mouths and they will uh, attack based on what they think is prey, but she's she's a little pissy um, You can see she's getting really chunky. She's about three and a half feet long, but uh, probably like seven pounds uh, They get very Hefty, but she's hissing at me sounds like she's not gonna want to come out right now, so I'll leave her alone But she also gets uh, one adult mouse frozen thawed weekly um She's got a little hide back there, a slate tile, water bowl. If she feels like hiding somewhere else, she usually will just bury under the substrate and stay there. Up here and to the right of the shelf, uh, we've got my garter snakes. Uh, in this big display tank here, we've got Mort, the eastern blackneck garter. Uh, don't mind the dead mice there. It's her feeding day today. Um, there she is. I'll try to get a better shot of her in a minute. But she's in... I don't believe this type of tank is in production anymore, so I don't really know the name, but it's two feet long, two feet high, uh, about a foot deep. Um, same floor plan as a standard 20 gallon, I think. Um, but she's got little uh, rubber tree ficus species, I think, some snake plant in the back. I just planted those in there yesterday, a big tillandsia. The plant that was in there last time I did a reptile room uh, died pretty fast. But this is not a live box turtle, this is just a empty shell I use as decor. Some more rocks, big tree stump in there. There we go. So this is Mort, the eastern black neck. Um, she is native to here. I actually uh, received her about five years ago. So she's my oldest snake and one of my oldest animals at the moment. Down here below Mort. We've got a significantly smaller snake. So in here, this is my smallest and ironically feistiest snake. Uh, this is, oops, here she goes. Tipsy, the eastern, er, Tipsy, the California red-sided garter. Uh, she's still just a baby, very small, as you can see. Uh, try to keep her from getting out and going on a rampage. Um, but she's in, again, an Exoterra breeder box, one of these little black hides, a coconut, a little water dish, and some foliage to hide in. Um, she's named Tipsy because she has a neurological condition uh, that affects her center of balance and the way she moves. Uh, basically about half of the time, whenever she gets really excited or scared of something, uh, she's kind of doing it now, she will actually uh, flip upside down and she will lose basically all control over what direction she's facing. Uh, doesn't affect her any other times other than when she's really excited, uh, and it shouldn't affect her lifespan. Uh, only a few other garter snakes I know of have had it, um, but 
She's doing really good. She's eating a uh, pinky, one pinky mouse, uh, once a week. Again, frozen thawed. Um, but, yeah. That should be it for the snakes. Um, got Scylla, Kosho, Mort, and Tipsy. Um, moving on, we will do the turtles. So, in this big tub, um, pretty close to the entrance of my room, is... Uh, he doesn't actually have a name yet, but this is a Russian tortoise, uh, found by a friend of mine, um, locally. But here he is, so you can get a better look at him. Um, he was found by a friend of mine actually just crossing their driveway. Uh, clearly enough, Russian tortoises aren't native to Central Texas, so presumably he was either someone's escaped or released pet. Uh, we've been looking for the owner. So far we have turned up nothing, so presumably uh, he was, uh, he either just was released by someone or he escaped quite a while ago and no one ever came looking for him. But he is really digging into my hand there. Not a very threatening animal, very powerful claws. Anyways, he is in a, I believe this is a 70 gallon tub, I just got this at Target. Uh, a while back. He's got a big water dish, I don't remember what brand this is, half log, uh, some rocks to help file down his nails, and a cuddle bone for calcium, though I haven't seen him use it before, um, and some Timothy hay. I throw in fresh hay every now and then. He gets a fresh salad every one to two days, usually daily. Um, that contains stuff like collard greens, lettuce, um, carrot, coleslaw, just whatever we have lying around, they're not picky. Moving up the hall here, uh, here's one of my non-reptilian pets, this is Teeny, the American Shorthair Cat. Uh, moving up the hall here, uh, I had a video on this guy a while back, you may have seen it if you frequent the channel. So in here, if I can find her, is my three-toed box turtle, uh, and she's just a hatchling, obviously enough, if she was an adult she couldn't, um, you know, hide herself so well, but, uh, got her also at NARBC, uh, a couple months ago from a local breeder named Deborah Sidney, um, I brought her up in the last reptile room video when I was dealing with a red-eared slider who, uh, had lost both of its hind legs. Let me see if I can find her. There she is. Only took a couple minutes of digging to find her. Um, but yeah, this is my baby three-toed box turtle. She was born September 2014, so two years old. Not quite a baby, but still very young. Um, she was buried down there in that pile of sphagnum moss. Um, but she's a cutie. She's, like I said, about two years old. Um, most likely a female, but we can't know for certain. Um, and she's in a standard 10-gallon tank on... A uh, mixture of cypress mulch, dirt, sphagnum moss. Um, planted some grass seeds in there a while back, but they haven't sprouted yet. Um, she's eating largely crickets and earthworms, uh, red wigglers usually. Uh, and then she gets a little mixed salad every now and then. But she's doing pretty well, and she's very cute. So, moving on, we'll do amphibians next. Back in the room, uh, there is one thing I forgot to mention. I got this uh, big aquatic turtle setup uh, from a ZooMed auction recently uh, at the Lone Star Rattlesnake Days. That's a uh, program for the preservation and benefit of rattlesnake species. Um, you can see it's still got the tag on there. I actually got this for about 60 bucks, and it's around a $400 value. So I'll be looking into aquatic turtles soon. I'll probably just get a baby uh, snake neck or soft shell or maybe some musk turtles, most likely. Moving on to amphibians, I still have three. This is my African clawed frog. Uh, just about the oldest animal in my collection, Xenopus lavis is the scientific name. Um, and if you noticed, I do have tags on most of the cages. Um, but. She's been with me for seven or eight years now. 
Um, got her from a little like grow a frog kit when I was five or six. Uh, no, no, like eight or nine, something like that. But she's doing well. She's eating uh, these Reptomen floating food sticks for turtles, frogs, stuff like that. Um, she's eating those every few days. Uh, doesn't really need that much food at this age. She's very big, about five inches long. And she's got a little sponge filter in the back there, powered by this pump. She's got some bamboo, uh, little pot to hide in, stuff like that. Over here are my two toads. Uh, on the left here is my Sonoran Desert Toad, uh, Incilius alvaris, I believe. I got him at Herps Austin last year, um, and he's doing very well. These guys, I believe, are actually the largest native toad species to the United States. Uh, they're found in places like Arizona, New Mexico, uh, I think very, very west Texas, I might be wrong on that. And then they go down into Mexico. But um, this, believe it or not, is actually the most dangerous animal in my collection. Uh, these guys produce a very potent toxin in those glands on his neck right there. Whoa. And those are called his paratoid glands. Uh, and they're known in their range for actually killing animals like dogs that latch onto them. Uh, and then they will secrete the toxin when they feel pressure. Um, but this guy is doing well. He's eating a diet of mainly dubia roaches, some superworms, sometimes crickets. Uh, he's in a standard 10 gallon tank with some cork bark, water dish. He's on coconut core, but I'm probably going to switch him to regular dirt soon. Um, yeah, he's doing well. He's only about half grown, so hand sized now. Should be about two hand sizes when he's uh, full grown. To the right of him is my uh, formerly known as Gulf Coast Toad. These were actually reclassified, I learned, as Coastal Plains Toads, I think in 2009. But this is a female. She's about max size, somewhere around four or five inches long. Um, and story behind this girl, I mentioned this in the last video, but if you haven't seen it, uh, I'm in marching band, and during a football game uh, last season, we were in uh, Rockdale, Texas. Uh, we came back, and as I was about to leave, one of the drum majors in the band comes running out of the band hall yelling my name. Uh, and I walk inside, and this girl has ridden in someone's marching shoe in their uniform bag uh, the whole two hours back from Rockdale. Uh, and so that's a bit of a drive. I didn't want to go back and release her there, so she stayed with me. She's doing well. Um, once again, standard 10 gallon tank, a couple flower pots to hide in, some decor back there, water dish, also on coconut core. And she has the same diet. She eats. Dubia roaches, superworms, stuff like that about once or twice a week. So I believe that's just about it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching if you've stuck through uh, however long this ends up being. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. I will be uploading care guides to most of the animals seen here probably sometime throughout the summer. Uh, and we've already got quite a few other videos. Um, and we just passed 1,000 subscribers, so thank you for that. Um, if you'd like to join the ranks, go ahead, uh, there'll be a subscribe button up here shortly, and links to a few other videos you can check out. You can also find me on Instagram and Redbubble, where I sell some art, at AfroHerbKeeper. Thanks for watching.